Topping the Times at 10, call them America's scummiest home videos, tape shot by Little Havana residents of hookers, drug dealers, and just your run-of-the-mill thugs freely roaming the neighborhood until residents took their tapes to us and then we took them to police. Now we've got our own videos, call them cops in Little Havana, as the police move in and the bad guys move out. Here's John Mattis. Pull the car over, pull over to the side, edge of the palau. The guy you're looking at was just busted for taking a walk on the wild side of Little Havana. And so are these guys. What's happened? How's Little Havana tonight? It's all part of a sting operation by Miami PD. Okay, she's in position now. And it was prompted by a Times investigation. It's a four-door maroon car facing northbound. She's talking to him now. Undercover officers took in customer after customer. I say got him before. Some of them offering as little as $15 for sex. Ooh, times must be tough. 15 for Oh, what a difference a few days make. It's a transvestite. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, look at here. That's Seraphin DeBesa, a local businessman who was so fed up with the hookers and drug dealers in his neighborhood that he shot his own undercover surveillance tape. And that's when the Times stepped in. Can we ask you about the neighborhood? What's going on over here? What's going right down here? Huh? What's like price of things down here? And it wasn't just on the streets. Take a look up there in the window. What are they doing? And why are they counting that money? You don't want to know. Oh, un poquito uh, coquina upstairs. But the mayor was real interested when we took him the tape. The front door. Yeah, this one's a little more obvious what it is. Yeah. And so were the police. In fact, they want to know who this lovely lady is picking up her skirt. That is a woman, isn't it? It picked up later on, as you can see, there's a problem with prostitutes and, and John's. And Miami police promised us they aren't going to let up. OK, he's good to go. Go ahead and take him down. We really appreciate the effort on, uh, on Whammy's part, especially you, you, John. We really appreciate what you've done. You've been very gutsy coming out and exposing these individuals and asking them, what are they doing here? So what's happening, guys? I have nothing. Yeah, it doesn't look like fun. John Mattis tells us the merchants will meet next week with Miami Mayor Joe Carroyo. The merchants say they know the area can't be turned around overnight, but they are in it for the long haul. At your local theaters this week, Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. Get in my belly! Come on! If you've seen the movie, you likely laughed heartily at two rather monstrous characters, fat bastard and a dwarf, mini-me. But if you're a child of the politically correct late 20th century, your laughter was tempered with guilt. Mark Mooney explains. And I'm gonna eat ya! Not long ago, they would have called out the PC police over a movie scene like this. A bald midget and a 600-pound Scotsman, the one trying to make a meal out of the other. Get in my belly! But instead of drawing outrage from spokespeople for the vertically and metabolically challenged, Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me, is making America laugh. Because Austin Powers is just so overwhelmingly silly. Before there was dwarf tossing, there was a time when it was okay to be short. Political correctness tried to right the wrongs of an insensitive America. But self-seriousness and linguistic self-restraint got boring. Pansy ass, pool pusher. Yes! And in time, gays got bashed in film. Me. The physically challenged I, got laughed at. I... <laughs> and they named a movie character the Fat Bastard, and it was a giggle. Just ask a man who dropped 100 pounds after hearing every fat joke on the pike. It is a spoof, and I think anybody who sees the movie should know that it is a spoof, and there's going to be a lot of exaggeration in the movie. Now, I don't enjoy being called a smurf when I walk into the supermarket to get a loaf of bread. For Sandra Quercia Grossa, it's one thing to call names, quite another to laugh at yourself. You are what you are and what God gave you, and you can be happy and enjoy it, or you can be miserable. We're about In the end, it seems we just got too self-serious, too thin-skinned, and too dull. We should know when we've crossed the line to offensive humor, but for now, we like loosening up. More on Austin Powers later in the show, including the message that the movie basically has for Star Wars, at least at the box office, which is, get in my belly! Best I can do.
Now, tonight's Times web poll, what are your thoughts on the characters Fat Bastard and Mini Me? They're offensive, overweight and short people have every right to complain, or they're racy but funny. Three, they're outrageously funny and not expensive, not offensive or expensive for that matter. The PC crowd should learn to behave. The performances are Oscar quality. That's your other choice. You can participate in our web poll by logging onto our website at www.whammy.citysearch.com. We'll have poll results for you at the end of the show. Break times now when we continue. Impeachment, that's old news. Travelgate, it's a big yawn. Whitewater, come on, who cares? We needed some good Clinton bashing to spice up the show, so we turned to the pundit who may hate him the most. He's a war criminal, a rapist, a psychopathic liar, and a man unusually open to any offer of corruption. And we'll track down a local athlete who may just turn into a local Olympic champ. And talk about news you can use later, Miami Herald television critic Terry Jackson will tell you what's worth missing, what's worth taping, and what's worth watching this week on the two. On this day in 1982, Argentine forces surrendered to the British on the Falkland Islands, ending the war. The conflict started when Argentina's military invaded the Falklands, claiming they belonged to Argentina, not Great Britain. Let's check today's top headlines and let's check them in less than 60 seconds. Who's afraid of Virginia Key? The beach, which has been closed for more than 15 years, could be reopened within 30 days, but only on the north side. Civil rights activists have been fighting a plan to privately develop the south side. They argue it has historical significance as the only beach open to blacks in Dade County during segregation. In the old days, casinos relied on the mob for protection. Now they can turn to William Rehnquist and his eight capos. The Supreme Court today ruled prohibitions on gambling advertisements are unconstitutional. The vote was nine to nothing, meaning if you bet against the casino industry and gave eight votes, you lose. Thanks to Warner Wolf for that. Bush and Clinton are hitting the campaign trail, but George and Bill, they're staying home. Hillary Clinton announced today she's setting up a New York bank account to collect contributions for her New York Senate run. Meanwhile, Texas Governor George W. Bush said he won't use an abortion litmus test for Supreme Court nom nominations. Word is, though, he will use an actual litmus test to see if any potential nominees are too acidic. What political leader is a bigger liar than Saddam Hussein, more arrogant than Fidel Castro, and more dangerous than Muammar Gaddafi? We'll give you a hint. He's got a dog named Buddy. Here's John Mattis with legendary Clinton basher Christopher Hitchens of Vanity Fair. He's a war criminal, a rapist, a psychopathic liar, and a man unusually open to any offer of corruption. He's not talking about Slobodan Milosevic or Saddam Hussein. Political writer Christopher Hitchens is talking about our president. So you want to know what I really think of him? Hitchens is author of the new book, No One Left to Lie To. He considers the Oval Office, for example, in the Lincoln bedroom, to belong to the president and his wife, to be used for fundraisers and as hot sheet motel. Hey, at least there's no neon sign out front. As for Clinton's foreign policy, did he wag the dog or didn't he? Three times last year, in Afghanistan, in Sudan, and in Iraq, there's now no doubt of it, Mr. Clinton used cruise missiles to try and alter his own court calendar. If you have nothing nice to say about your president, say it anyway. And when you're through with Clinton, there's always Janet Reno. I don't know what she was like when she was here, but if by any chance uh, she was a self-righteous but incompetent, that's probably what they picked her for. So much for his cabinet. How about his political advisors, guys like Dick Morris? Could have grown a better specimen than Dick Morris on my sponge in the, in the bathroom. He, he exemplifies everything that's cheesy and, and horrible about American politics. Christopher Hitchens, it needs to be noted, voluntarily ratted out his old friend Sidney Blumenthal to Ken Starr's office. On Friday, we reported on a computer virus called worm.explore.zip that was spreading throughout the world. Now it turns out the virus is even more infectious than previously believed. Like its basketball counterpart, the worm rebounded with a vengeance today when everyone returned to work from the weekend. Eradicating it from your email is not enough to stop the virus. It worms itself back onto people's computers through the network coworkers use to share files. Yolanda McRae is on the fast track, a collegiate champion. She's one of the top track stars in the country. The Sydney Olympics is her next goal, and considering all the hurdles she's cleared along the way, it would be a mistake to bet against her. Here's Danielle Serena. 
Every time she steps on the line, she expects to win, and she does everything she can to win. She has that uh, don't mess with me attitude. I'm going to be the best. Yolanda McCray was on the money when she predicted a sweep in the 100-yard hurdles two weeks ago at the NCAA championships. Yolanda McCray of Miami. But then she usually wins. If you're going to plan on going do, to do your best, you have to think like a winner and, be a, and think like a champion. You can't think for anything other than first place. At the age of 22, McCray is a six-time All-American at UM and on the fast track to the 2000 <laughs> Olympics. Yolanda's definitely, you know, ranks as the top athlete we've had come through the University of Miami. But that success wasn't handed to her. McCray was one of three children raised in a single-parent household. There were years growing up in the ghettos, constantly moving, her family scraping by from paycheck to paycheck. McCray learned early on she had to fight for what she wanted. Sit. Go. Call it destiny. McCray was born to a long line of athletes, not just her two brothers, but her mother was a track star. It was basically the McCray, the McCray thing or whatever. Wherever we used to go, people used to always ask us to race, race other people or race each other. It wasn't long before she took her talent from the streets to the track, racking up award after award and breaking four records at UM in the hurdles and as a member of the relay team. Instead of coming in third and fourth, she was getting up to second and started coming in first. And then all of a sudden, at the junior year, she was ready to go. She was smoking there. <laughs> in the midst of her breakneck pace for world domination, McCray took a year off to focus on her studies. Unheard of. And yet, when she returned to competition this season, she still blew everyone away. I just want to be the best that I can be in life. You know, I want to, I want to do the best things that I can. If I ever have kids, I want my kids to be able to look back on their parent and be proud of. You can watch Yolanda McRae later tonight. She'll be a guest right here on Sports Town. That's coming up at 10:30. Birthday game time. When we come back. Answers to how old these celebrities will be tomorrow. First, Helen Hunt, then Doogie Hauser, Neil Patrick Harris, and Mrs. David Arquette, Courtney Cox. Also, is South Park in danger of going south? Miami Herald TV critic Terry Jackson says the new episodes need to hit it out of the park. And will there be a Clooney sighting next year on ER? And if so, what will it cost the producers? And all the weather you could possibly need, and as the kids like to say, a bag of chips. Your birthday game answers. Tomorrow, Helen Hunt will be 36. Neil Patrick Harris will be 26. Nothing makes you feel makes you feel older than knowing that Doogie Howser is going to be 26 years old tomorrow. And uh, Courtney Cox will be 35 years old. Her new husband, David Arquette, just 27 years old. Older women. They're a tight-knit community devoted to spiritual enlightenment, but behind the beards and dark coats of Miami's Orthodox Jewish community lies a dark secret, drug and alcohol addiction. Tomorrow on The Times, we investigate the deep-rooted denial on what's being done to bring the Orthodox addicts into treatment. Also, imagine paying thousands of dollars for a sleek new wood floor only to have it buckle underneath your feet. Tomorrow, The Times fights back against a carpet and floor company trying to walk all over its customers. Who killed Kenny is no longer the big question. At the end of this season, we may be asking, what killed South Park? Year three of the show premieres this week. In this week's TV Times, Miami Herald television critic Terry Jackson says, at times, the show appears to be stuck in park. The thermometer says it's summer, and usually that means bad TV. But if we look really hard, we can find a couple of things to watch this week, most of them on cable. Dude, that kicks ass! Well, that TV series that sort of immortalized cussing eight-year-old South Park comes back for its third season starting Wednesday night. Hello there, children! Hey, Jeff! I was a fan of this show when it first came out. The first episode, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, was one of the best comedic episodes I've ever seen. And these scary idiots wanted to operate on me. Since then, it's fallen downhill, and I hope for the third season that they pick it up. Shut up, dude. You're being totally immature. This Sunday is Father's Day. And while television doesn't make as big a deal out of Father's Day as it does out of Mother's Day, the best show on TV this week about fathers and sons is an ABC special called 
the story of fathers and sons, which airs Thursday. I love my dad because he's really funny. It's a heartwarming special about the interaction between fathers and sons. If you haven't gotten enough of basketball this week with the NBA championships, A&E can offer you a look at another side of basketball, the Harlem Globetrotters. Hey, everybody. Globetrotters in town. In their A&E biography series, they look at the group that's been called the Clown Princes of Basketball. It's worth taking a look at. Perhaps the best thing on TV this week is a made-for-TV movie on TNT that looks at the lives of computer giants Stephen Jobs and Bill Gates. It's called Pirates of Silicon Valley, and it stars Noah Wiley as Stephen Jobs, the man who created Apple computers. It also stars Anthony Michael Hall, the former Brat Pack movie star, as Bill Gates, the richest man in the world. Look, it's our job to find out what this guy doesn't know that he needs but does need, and then make sure he knows that he does need it and that we're the only ones to give him the answer. It's an unflinching look at two complex men who have come to define the computer era in the world. This is one of the best movies of the year, bar none. That's TV Times with Miami Herald TV critic Terry Jackson. There's big news to report tonight in the entertainment world. I'm not gonna read the day's entertainment stories. Man, that is big news. Here's Faye Fredericks, what's going on Faye? <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Austin Powers stole Star Wars' mojo over the weekend, besting The Phantom Menace at the box office by a two-to-one margin. I've turned the moon into what I like to call a Death Star. Rip off! The $54.7 million take helped Powers shag some new records. The biggest comedy opening, the biggest June opening, and the second biggest non-holiday opening. The weekend total is more than the original Austin Powers movie made from its entire theatrical run. And since the movie only cost $33 million to create, it could end up making as much as... Ben, how much could it make? One million dollars! <laughs> Moving on. They say money can't buy success, or was that happiness? Anyway, what it apparently does buy is an Oscar. Michael Jackson picked up David O. Selznick's Oscar for Gone with the Wind at a New York auction this past weekend. No flea market special this. Jackson paid $1.5 million. It's the only way he's getting an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. The creator of the Chimp Channel is going ape over his dismissal from the show. Tom Stern, who co-created Chimp TV, was fired right before production began because he staged a naked protest on the set. That's all. He says TBS, which is carrying the program, gutted the satire from the show, made it too tame, and let the legal department write the jokes. Stern also claims TBS gave him prior permission to go bananas and monkey around on the set. He has filed suit in L.A. We, on the other hand, have hit the wall in the monkey metaphors. The story is done. People Magazine reports George Clooney will appear several times on ER next year. He'll receive $2 million for every appearance. Not a bad gig, picking up a $2 million check every time you make an appearance at work. Then there's Ricky Martin, who says real men don't just eat quiche, they cry while doing it. In a new book about the singer, Martin is quoted as saying, crying is a very healthy habit. And he cries, and cries a lot. Yeah, cries Kiss all the way to the bank. And finally, for those of you who just can't get enough toilet paper in your lives, and who among us <laughs> doesn't love toilet paper, <laughs> there's the return of Mr. Whipple, the Charmin Man. Procter & Gamble has lured the 82-year-old actor who played the Charmin Man out of retirement. Back in 1978, Mr. Whipple ranked third on the list of best-known Americans after President Richard Nixon and Billy Graham. Of course, that was long before, Ben, you made the highest-paid anchor by the Times recent poll. Highest paid anchor? Highest paid anchor, I believe that was it, wasn't it? I don't know what uh, I don't know what poll you were looking at. Thank you so much, Faye. Yeah, that's fabulous. What did Mr. <laughs> Whipple have to retire from? When we return, five days worth of weather in less than one minute. That's less than 12 seconds a day. Stick around. And they're out of the blocks. McCray with a good start out in the lead after 10 meters, but here comes Gail Devers. It's Devers. McCray, Devers at the tape. 45! Just a thought. <laughs> Just a little prep. <clears throat> what are we going to talk about? Do you, want, you want to take the Marlins and the... <coughs> Sports Town is less than two minutes away. Here with a preview, Tim Ray.
Mark Jones. All right, thanks a lot, Ben. A lot happening on Sports Town in the baseball world. The Florida Marlins hitting the road big time. 12 consecutive games on the road in 14 games. They started off tonight against the big unit, Randy Johnson in Arizona. Yeah, speaking of the road, the road to the World Series continues for the Hurricanes in Omaha. We'll check on them. Plus, speaking of Hurricanes, the best track athlete over there, Yolanda McRae, live right here in studio. Ben, it's all coming up in just a few. Thank you, guys. Of course, we just told you about Yolanda McRae a couple of minutes ago. I don't think I realized I was actually on TV for that brief moment of awkwardness there. <laughs> we begin the forecast looking far across the Atlantic, where Arlene, our first tropical storm of the season, continues to spin. Good news, Arlene's 50-mile-an-hour winds won't threaten the United States. She'll remain over the open waters of the Atlantic. Tropical storm watch is still in effect for Bermuda. Tonight's local satellite picture picks up the partly cloudy skies around the area. We had a few showers earlier today, but most have died out. After a high of 89 degrees in Miami, our current temperatures have dropped back into the low 80s. We'll begin the day in the mid-70s tomorrow. Rain will spread over the region during the morning hours. Showers and thunderstorms will be with us throughout the afternoon. Some could be severe with heavy downpours and gusty winds, so be prepared for some rough driving weather. Over the next five days, the threat of rainy weather will continue. Highs continue in the upper 80s with those pesky thunderstorms likely throughout the period. Here at the Times, we're here to help so you don't have to take matters into your own hands. If you have a consumer problem, you can call us and we will go to great lengths not only to tell your story, but to fix your problems. If you think you've been wronged, you can call The Times Fights Back at 604-6110 or you can email us at thetimes at miamiusa.com. We hope to bring you some web poll results tonight, but our web poll broke, so we won't have those tonight. Time's up. Almost. It's been a tense day here at the Times. CNN is here shooting a story about us for their show, CNN Entertainment Weekly. The show is hosted by Judd Rose and Willow Bay. And that's ironic because whenever I read a story, I think, how would Willow say that? What would Judd's spin be? I know if I'm anything like they are, everything will be okay. Now time's up. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. These are the Times at 10.